Welcome to our Bible study here tonight, and we're taking a look at the book of Judges and Ruth. Our series is entitled, Fallen People, Faithful God. Because we're sinners, we're fallen, and we make mistakes, and we're going to learn that about Israel, that they made a lot of mistakes. But even though we make our mistakes, God is faithful to keep His promises. And that's one thing I want you to learn about God in this study, that God is faithful to His promises, and we can always count on Him for that. Our first lesson tonight is understanding narratives. Understanding narratives. Our theme today is the book of Judges and Ruth are written in narrative styles that will help us understand the book. Narratives, or they're written in kind of short stories. And these short stories are piled, or they, they've been put and compiled together to, for a bigger story. So it's not just a bunch of little stories, they're all compiled together for a larger story. One story of the book of Judges. And we're going to, and, and and we're going to see that here uh, tonight. Our key verse for tonight is found in Joshua chapter 23 and verse 11. It says, Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. Take heed to yourselves. When we study God's word, we need some help. And it doesn't hurt to get some help. Some people are reluctant sometimes to get some help when they study the Bible because they think, well, I can learn it all on my own. But we can use some help. And that's what we see here. Have you ever bought an appliance or a tool? And you were using that tool and you thought that you had that tool where you could use it efficiently and all of a sudden somebody came along and did something with it that you didn't know it could do. And you said, wow, I didn't know it could do that. How did you know that? And they might say, reply, well, I read the manual. I read the instructions. And maybe you didn't. You just picked it up and started using it. But they read the instructions and found out, hey, there are different things this, thing, this tool or this appliance can do. But you didn't take the time to read it to find out. And you know, that's kind of like the Bible. We could use it and read it and study it on our own, but we could learn much more information and more of the meaning of these stories if we'll get some help. And there are some principles that we're going to look at here tonight. There are five principles that are going to help us to better understand the book of Judges and Ruth if we'll take time to use them. So we have five of them. Five of these important principles here. So let's get right into it here tonight. And let's look at number one, the setting. Number one, the setting. There are three parts to the settings found in the book of Judges and Ruth. So let's take a look at these three settings. Letter A, you'll notice we have the physical the physical setting. These are the names of places and landmarks in the stories. Take, for instance, we're going to look at the story of Deborah. Very important story. Deborah was a judge. But this, the story took place at the river of Kishon. To really understand the significance of that story and what God did for Israel, you have to understand the river Kishon and principles about that river and properties about that river that will show you that God did a great miracle in that story. So understanding the settings, the physical settings, and why they are important and what, what actually happened and why, uh, why what happened there was a miracle by God because of those settings that they were in. There's a letter B, the cultural settings. To understand the culture, the customs, and the beliefs of the people involved in our story. It's under, you know, we need to know the customs surrounding the kinsman redeemer if we're going to understand the book of Ruth. We need to understand what Ruth did. You know, some people misinterpret Ruth 
And they say, well, you know, the night that Ruth went to Boaz and uncovered his feet while he was sleeping at night, they may think, well, Ruth was a little forward doing that. But if we understand the customs and what she was accomplishing by doing that, we'll find out that, no, she wasn't forward at all. She was just going according to the customs of her people. And Boaz would un understood exactly what Ruth was trying to do. So it's important to understand the customs uh, of the people that are mentioned in the story and their beliefs. Also, another setting is the temporal setting. The temporal setting. This is information about what is happening in the world during the story. What's going on in the world outside of the story? Because these stories, these narratives, they're taking place in history. They're not just fictitious stories. These are true stories, and they were set in a time of the world. So, and, and understanding the times they were in will help us to even further understand what was happening in that story and why God was working with those people. You've probably heard the term covenants. There are covenants in the Bible. These are special relationship. A covenant is an ancient Near East tool for legally re regulating relationships between individuals and nations. So a king, he would go to his, his, his people and he would say, we're going to make a covenant. We're going to make a, you're going to, I'm going to fulfill my promises. I'm going to fulfill my end of the bargain. But you got to fulfill your end as well. That's a covenant. And to understand the book of Judges and why God was doing what he was doing and why Israel were doing what they were doing, we have to understand the covenant, some of the covenants of the Bible. There are five different covenants in the, in the Bible. We see that there is the Abrahamic covenant. A covenant God made with Abraham. What did God say to Abraham? God came to Abraham and said, I'm going to make you a promise. I'm going to give your descendants the land of Canaan. Now that was a promise made to Abraham. And that promise was what we call unconditional. Meaning that regardless of what Abraham said or did or do or didn't do, that God was going to fulfill that promise to his descendants. So it was an unconditional promise to Abraham and his descendants. Then we see another one is the Mosaic Covenant. The Mosaic Covenant. This covenant was come in effect after Israel had left the land of Egypt. They had left Egypt, they had been delivered and they came into the wilderness, and there at the Mount Sinai, God made a covenant with Israel. Now, at Sinai, God came down and gave Moses the Ten Commandments and the Law of Moses. Now, basically, that law was a promise. God said, listen, if you will obey my law, if you will follow my law, then I will bless you. I will bless you in the land. I'll give you freedom. I'll give you uh, spiritual, physical, financial blessings uh, if you will follow me and be faithful to me. And Israel said, we will. They agreed to that covenant. They said, we will do it. Well, God said, if you didn't do it, I would chasten you. If you, if you didn't follow, that God told him, right? He says, listen, if you don't follow, then you will be chastened. Well, that's the covenant Israel was under during the time of Judges and Ruth. They were under the Mosaic Covenant. And we can understand, if you understand that, now you can understand why God was chastening Israel. Because they were not following God. They were breaking His law. They had broken their promise as a nation to God. And so what did God do? Well, God used the nations, the Gentile nations, to chasten them. 
such as the Moabites, the, uh, the Syrians, and the Ammonites, and the Midianites. Those were nations outside of Israel that God had left there to discipline Israel when they didn't do what they were supposed to do. And those are the nations, when we read and study the book of Judges, the early portion of those narratives, you'll see them mentioned, the Moabites, the Midianites, the Ammonites. They are the ones God will use to judge, to chasten his people. As time goes on, God sent more severe punishment to them. But this time, he used the Gentile nations Israel had once conquered that remained in the land, such as the Canaanites, the Philistines, and the Hittites. And they were, God used them because Israel wasn't learning their lesson, and they were going farther and farther and farther away from God. And that explains why God did what he did, and why Israel was always going through this cycle of rebellion, then there would be a time of, re, of God discipline, and then a time of repentance, and then a time of restoration, but it wasn't very long. They would be right back into the beginning again where they were rebelling against God. So we have to understand that. And that's the temporal settings, uh, these, these uh, covenants that Israel was under. Well, that leads us to point number two, the plot the plot. A plot is simply the sequence of events that either bring the conflict to a resolution or end with the conflict unresolved. Now the plot, every story, every narrative has its own little plot, but it's part of a larger plot that God's trying to show us. And what's, it, what's the plot? The plot is this. God is faithful to his word. God is faithful to his word. And God is faithful to his promises. Even when Israel disobeyed, God told them he would chasten them. And God did. And then when God says, if you'll return and repent, I'll restore you. And God did. Through a leader. Through a leader or a judge that brought the people, and usually during the time of the judge, the people remained faithful to God. But this cycle happened over and over and over again. And we find out that as Israel went farther and farther into these cycles, they went farther and farther away from God. And the overall plot is this. They needed someone to keep them faithful. Following God wasn't enough. And that's why by the end of the time, by the end of the stories of these narratives, we find that Israel is calling for a king. We need a king. We need someone who can help us militarily and someone who will help us morally stay on the right track. Now, we know the answer to that, and that was King David. David uh, is going to be the fulfillment of of this king that Israel needs. But there's even a greater fulfillment, the fact that we all need a king. Not a physical king, but we need a spiritual king. And of course, that's King Jesus. And hopefully tonight, he's ruling and reigning in your heart. But we all need a king. We can't, you know, we could look at uh, people in Judges and say, oh, you foolish people. How silly are you? But really, when we look at our own lives, our lives would much look like these plots, wouldn't it? Our cycles of rebellion and restoration, back and forth, we have our own cycles, and we need to follow Christ to keep us faithful and consistent in our life. I mean, we're following the same plot. Nothing's different. So we see the plot. And then we see also the characters. The main character in the book of Judges, even though he may not be mentioned, it's God. God is the main character. Now, every story will have other characters. There'll be men and women who will be named, and they'll be used by God. But let's remember, the main character 
in our story of the book of Ruth and Judges is going to be God himself, the Lord. And it's what he's doing for his people and what he's doing through them uh, for that. So God is the main character of our story. That leads us again uh, to point number four. Point number four. The point of view. The point of view is the vantage point from which the story is told. Or you could write the word the narrator. Every story has a has a you know has a point of view or who's who's given the story right while I was on vacation I read uh, the, the the call of the wild by Jack London and I found that be interesting I've seen the movie before but the book is actually written from the vantage point of the dog all right, if you've ever read that book, it's from the dog's point of view, and it's quite interesting. Jack London uh, basically said, you know, dogs aren't much different than people. <laughs> we all deal with anger, revenge, and love. And that's the same with dogs. You know, that's what he put in his story. And it's a story about a dog taking up to the, uh, to the gold rush up in the Yukon to be used uh, by dog in a dog sled and how he basically started at the bottom and went to the top uh, of the lead to became the leader dog and then eventually uh, he found uh, Thornton Jack Thornton who he loved and cherished all right so it was kind of interesting but that was from the dog's point of view and uh, it was an interesting read well the book of Judges the narrator, we don't know exactly who it is, but the, 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 we think it may have been Samuel, the prophet Samuel, because Samuel, he, he kind of overlapped between the judges, the period of the judges, and the time of the monarchy. He, he lived at the very end of the judge period, but he also lived during the beginning of the monarchy where King Saul and, and David were introduced in the Bible. And it's most likely people believe that it was this Samuel is writing this. And that would make sense knowing that uh, the idea of the book of Judges is that it's showing that Israel needs a king. And Samuel would be writing from that perspective how, why God was allowing Israel to have a king. And why David would be so important. Now, some of these people, Samuel probably knew. But, some of the people he didn't know. It had been handed down word of mouth. And of course we know the inspiration of the Holy Spirit would have guided and directed him in all the information. Uh, and what we have is the, the word of God in an accurate form. But we know the period of Judges is about 300 years, so it's impossible for Samuel to have known many of these people personally. But he compiles these stories, and so we have this point of view, all right, this, from his perspective, and why God is working the way he's working. He's leading, there's a purpose for Judges and Ruth, and we see that even in the book of Ruth, how it's gonna lead to King David. All right, and how that is the answer, God's answer, and uh, for the nation of Israel, they need a king and a and a righteous and a moral king. Not as, not only just a military man, he needs to be a moral man for the nation. And then that leads us to number five. The fifth principle is rhetorical devices. Rhetorical devices. Rhetorical devices serve to highlight what the writer wanted the readers to notice. What did the writer want us to know? What, and what he did is that he repeated some things. So when you see something repeated in the Bible, it's not just by mistake. Because of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, there's a purpose. And so one rhetorical device we'll find in the book of Judges is repetition. Repetition. And there are going to be some uh, repeated phrases such as, and there was no king in Israel. 
right? That's a repeated phrase. There was no king. That's, that's important. Also, we'll read also, and the people did what was right in their own eyes. That's an important phrase as well. That gives us an idea of what the stories are about. Is that what, This is what happens when we don't follow God, when we do what we think is right, not according to what God thinks. So these repetitions, we'll see repetitions of images and repetitions of, of the theme of the book over and over. Uh, we'll see this kind of this whole theme, such as the repetition of the cycles, the downward cycles, all right, from one spectrum to another. They're repeated seven times. That's purpose. That's to tell us something. So that's repetition. And then chiasm. Chiasm. Chiasm helps reveal the focal point of the story. Every book has a focal point or a climax, right? The climax, the focal point. When everything's built up, and then, the per then, you, then after the focal point, it goes down hill from there, and, and we get the message, and all the things come. You know, the book comes together. And they believe the focal point in the book of Judges is the life of Gideon. Gideon typifies the nation of Israel. How he goes from faithlessness, he, has, he doesn't have any faith in his own ability, he has no faith that God will supply his need, and no faith that God will deliver him, to faith where he finally gets that faith and he believes God's word, he believes God's promises, and he reacts on it and he, and he goes out and defeats the enemy, but he makes some bad choices. And because of those bad choices, people suffer. And that's kind of like the whole story of the book of Judges, the whole nation. They, they, they go from faithlessness to faith in God and believing God and having victory, but then they just make those bad choices and they go right back where they started. And the book of, they believe that Gideon, the life of Gideon is the focal point of that story, uh, of how that goes in that. So that's chiasm, uh, the, the term. We don't hear about that very much, but that's, a, that's the term for that. Well, in, con in conclusion tonight, there's a purpose. Why study the Old Testament? Why, why take time to study the book of Judges and the book of Ruth? Well, notice Romans chapter 4. I'm sorry, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. You know, when the Apostle Paul wrote this, this verse, there was no New Testament. They didn't, they didn't have a New Testament like we do today. They had the Old Testament. They had the completed Jewish Old Testament. So when he talks about uh, the scriptures, he's talking about the Old Testament. Now today, when we refer to the scriptures because of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and how God worked among the apostles and through the New Testament, we have the New Testament, which is also the scriptures. And they are been given to us by God. And we compile an even greater book all right, with our Bible. Not just the Old Testament, we have the New Testament. But you know, it explains to us that during the days of Paul, Paul knew the value of studying the Old Testament. He knew the value. Now he knew things have changed, and he knew he was in a different day, but he said, listen, there's some worth, there's some good by studying the Scriptures. And that's what he says here. Written, the Old Testament was written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now, not everything in the Old Testament will apply to a New Testament believer, but we can learn some lessons. And hopefully from the book of Judges and Ruth, we'll learn, as I said at the beginning, I reiterate it again, God's faithful. God is going to keep His word. He's going to keep His promises. And He'll keep His promises to you, even when we're in the New Testament. And we can trust Him. So our, theme, our summary here tonight, 
our first summary, our first lesson, our summary here tonight is this, persevere in studying the scriptures. Persevere in studying the scriptures. Keep studying. You say, well, preacher, I don't always understand when I read the Bible. That's okay. You know, I don't understand everything either. But I keep reading. And the more I read, the more I understand. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit to help us. We also have helps. We have men and people, women who have studied the Bible and have given us other materials to help us know what the Bible says. And the more we learn, the more we can apply and see, yes, God is faithful in everything he says. Well, that's the end of our lesson here tonight. And I want to thank you for watching, and may God bless you.